Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Bacteria Lab. Um, I'm redoing this lab for this semester because uh, last semester I was playing around with the agar. Um, I was making it at home myself. And one of the things I realized was that agar is very prone to contamination, meaning like you might be swabbing your hands and testing different surfaces and stuff, but literally just opening your Petri dish and exposing it to the air and the dust, you're exposing it to all kinds of mold spores and bacteria spore spores. And so like, I wanted to redo this lab with a little bit more attention on how to prevent your dishes from getting contaminated. Um, and so let's just start with a, a brief introduction. So what we're gonna be looking at is we're gonna be looking at uh, bacteria and um, trying to get an idea of how much and how much bacteria is present on a particular surface. And at the same time, also uh, how many different kinds of bacteria. So two different things, two different things we'll be measuring throughout this lab. We'll be measuring um, how many bacteria, how many individual bacteria are crawling around on a surface. And then number two, we'll be measuring how many different types of bacteria are crawling around on those surfaces. And so there are two different metrics that we'll be looking at. Um, in order to figure out, because bacteria are, are so infinitesimally small, it's impossible to see them with the naked eye. What we need to do is we need to uh, sample a surface and then we need to culture that sample and grow the individual bacteria um, by the order of tens of thousands so that what ends up happening, if you look on your lab, so I have my lab in front of me, if you look at your lab on the right in the middle there, that Petri dish, each one of those little circles that you see, see on there, that's hundreds of thousands of bacteria that are all genetically identical because they all arose from one bacteria. And so that one bacteria gave rise to one colony of bacteria of all the same genetic um, identity. They're all the same exact genome, but they're all individuals that came from that one bacteria. So that's what's called a colony. Um, and you'll notice on that bacteria plate, you know, there's some colonies that grow faster than others. So some are bigger than others. Uh, you'll notice that some are larger, are different colors than others. You'll notice some of them uh, grow together. And so bacteria are going to behave and look different on agar, um, depending on the type of bacteria, depending on how many types of bacteria they are. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to sample a bunch of different surfaces, and we're going to plate them on agar dishes. And agarose, agarose is two things. So the nutrient agar that we're using in this lab is made up of agar, and that's just gelatin. So that's that's non-nutrient. The, the agar itself, what makes it kind of jelloey and gelatinous that makes the agar itself stick together, that has zero nutritional value. It's basically just cow hoofs, horse hoofs, or I think some of it comes from seaweed. Uh, it's the nutrients that are in the agar that provide the growth medium for the bacteria. And so we have nutrient agar in our lab kits. Uh, the nutrient agar is made up of agar, and then it could the nutrients could be a number of different things. A lot of times people will use malt extract, like what they use for uh, brewing beer, like uh, and you know cultivating yeast. Uh, malt extract. Some people like you can even use dog food, like crushed up dog food, and mix it into agar, and then make uh, your own petri dishes at home. Uh, there's just a whole bunch of different stuff you can use. Uh, what is it like there's a like the black carbon stuff that you know like you in your toothpaste well some toothpaste that have the black stuff you can use that but anyways uh we're just using nutrients so we'll assume it's like malt extract like light malt extract and agar in our petri dishes and so that's what we're going to do that's going to be our food for our bacteria um, some of the stuff you're going to need you're going to need your two bottles of nutrient agar you're going to need your 10 petri dishes you're going to need 10 sterile swabs. You do not need tweezers. Um, you're going to need this, though. This is your parafilm. This is, ah, that's how you're going to seal the edges of your plates so that bacteria can't climb into your petri dish and contaminate it while you're actually um, cultivating the, the surfaces, meaning like you're cultivating your plates. How do I put this? Um, so once you swab your plates, you put the lid on, and then you, you basically seal it off so nothing can get in there and contaminate your specimen that you collected. That's a better way to say it. Um, you don't need tweezers for this, and you probably won't need plastic transfer pipettes. But definitely the swabs, definitely the parafilm, definitely your dishes. And you might say, Brad, where are your two nutrient agar bottles? Well, I will tell you. So 
to get the nutrient agar to liquefy, to warm back up, uh, there's a couple of different things you can do. If you have a pressure cooker, like um, one of these Instapots that I have back here, you can literally take your bottle. Um, actually, I'll pull mine out right now so you can see them. Yeah, so what I did was I put them into my Instant Pot. I took the lid and I twisted them about a quarter of a turn back. And what that allows is when this stuff heats up, it boils and that air, that boiling air has to go somewhere. And if you have the cap screwed on tight, you might blow up your agar inside of your Instant Pot. So you unscrew the cap just about a quarter turn. And then I capped them off with some tin foil just to make sure like none of the water or steam got up into the cap. And what you'll notice is you'll notice that my nutrient agars, I'm going to tighten the lid now, my nutrient agars are perfectly liquefied. Okay. Now, if you don't have an instant pot to do this, uh, you can boil them in water. Uh, you can microwave them for, but if you microwave them or you boil them in water, make sure you just open up that cap about a quarter turn. Um, and if you're microwaving them, it gets hot fast. So make sure that you're watching the microwave for it to be boiling. And what you're probably going to have to do is a couple cycles. You probably have to microwave it until you see it start to boil. You probably have to stop the microwave, grab a hot pad and kind of stir it or swirl it up, put it back in, microwave it until it boils again, stir it, microwave it. And then the goal here is to let it cool off until it's about 130 degrees. So if you have some way of measuring that, of measuring it getting to be 130 degrees, that would be helpful. Um, where was I going? Okay, so what, what you can see though, is you can see that I have mine completely liquefied. It's nice and hot, it's ready to be poured. Uh, what I did was I put it in the Instant Pot with that quarter turn on the lid. Uh, I did that for 15 minutes. So these have already been sterilized, they don't need to be sterilized again. I, all I'm doing is liquefying them so I can pour them. So that's why I only did it for 15 minutes and it worked perfect. They're nice and nice and liquidy. So while I'm talking to you, they're basically cooling off to the point where I can pour them and not get a whole bunch of steam coming off of it and messing up my samples that way. All right, what I'm gonna do for this lab is I'm actually going to pour two different sets of agar plates. I'm gonna pour, um, and you, you probably don't have the equipment I do, so you're gonna have to just do um, all 10 Petri dishes um, on your counter. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour five Petri dishes on my counter, just like you're watching right now, and I'm going to do it in just a second. And then I'm going to pause the video, and I'm going to go get my still air box. And a still air box is, well, I'll show you what it is when I get it. Big box. It's got two handholds in it. You put it on the counter. You put everything underneath it, and you just reach your arms in there and work and pour your agar. And what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to prevent, like, any dust settling onto your Petri dishes while you're pouring them. Um, or any of the mold spores and stuff like that. And so what I want to see is I'm going to have two different sets of Petri dishes. I'll have five that I did in the still air box, and then I'll have the five that I just poured on the counter right now. So we're going to get our Petri dishes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video. I'm also going to get some isopropyl alcohol for my hands, and I'm just going to spray my hands down to make sure they're nice and clean before I do this. So if you have isopropyl or you have hand sanitizer, go wash your hands, sanitize your hands, um, Spray your hands off. Uh, if you have latex gloves, that's even better. Um, even if you have latex gloves, put the gloves on and spray them down, okay, with isopropyl. You can never be too sanitary when you're doing this stuff. So I'm going to pause that and get that equipment. Okay, so I have some nitrile gloves. You do not need these. Just go, just go wash your hands with soap and water if you don't have any nitrile gloves. So I'm going to put the nitrile gloves on, and then I'm going to saturate my gloves with isopropyl alcohol before I even touch the Petri dishes. Because I could transfer, I could transfer bacteria from my hands onto the petri dishes, pour my agarose, and then my agarose is already contaminated before I even go sample stuff, which is not what we're looking for. Okay, got the nitrile gloves on. Just gonna take the isopropyl, spray front and back, get it nice and saturated. Okay, gloves are clean. Now I'm gonna spray the container with the petri dishes just a little bit, and I'm gonna pull out five petri dishes because like i said i'm going to do five in the still air box so i pull out my five petri dishes i make sure that when i pull these out that the lid side is facing down okay and now these these petri dishes are for the most part pretty sterile um, i'm not going to worry about sterilizing them at all 
And what we're gonna do is then we're gonna take our five petri dishes and you have two bottles of nutrient agar. And hopefully these are cooled off enough that they're gonna work for you. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take one petri dish at a time. I'm gonna place it in front of me. Take my uh, take my nutrient agar little uh, cap off. And then I'm just gonna loosen the cap on this, but I'm not gonna take it off yet because I don't want dust to fall in there. Okay. As soon as I'm ready, I'm gonna quickly take the lid off my Petri, pour it just until it covers the bottom of my, of my plate. I'm gonna put the lid back on. Seems like it's a little bit hot. I'm actually gonna let it cool off a little bit. I'm gonna shake it up too. I saw some chunks come out. So I'm gonna shake it up and I'm gonna let it cool off a little bit and then I'll um, start the video again. All right, so it's cooled off a little bit. I'm gonna take my next plate I'm going to set it on top. The lid, in case you're wondering what the lid is, the lid is the part that goes over the base. So the lid um, envelopes or goes over the base. I'm going to loosen up the cap. Then at the same time, remove the cap and very gently pour until just the bottom is covered. Place, re Return the cap. And I'm just going to go one after another until I pour all five. So remember, we're only pouring until the bottom of the Petri dish is covered. I'm even using the, the, the lid of the Petri dish to kind of cover it. I got one last one right here. That one's got a ton of bubbles. So just be careful if you shake it up, you're going to get a ton of bubbles and that's not really good because you're not going to be able to grow anything on bubbles. All right, so if you did shake it, try and try to wait until it until the bubbles dissipate before you pour them. All right, and so these ones are my five that I poured, and I'm just gonna let them cool over here. I'm actually gonna put um, something over the top of them so that they don't get exposed to air unnecessarily. So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, so I have my still air box all set up. Basically, it's a box. I've got two holes cut here with two gloves taped to those holes. Inside of my still air box, you can see I have my um, my agaros and my Petri dishes. I'm not going to make you watch me pour these, but I'm just going to stick my gloves in and pour them. Um, you go ahead and pour your next five Petri dishes and then uh, place them. I put mine underneath the kitchen towel to keep dust from getting in them. And then we'll reconvene when we have all ten. All right, so I poured my dishes, I took my still air box away, and I'm just sliding these under here so they don't get any dust contamination. And then we basically just have to wait um, for them to solidify. So that might take like 45 minutes to an hour. So go ahead and pause the video, go eat some ice cream, uh, come back when your plates are solid, and we'll finish this lab. All right, guys, so I've decided to split this into two videos. So this would be the preparation portion, so this will be part one. And then when we go sample stuff, that's going to be part two. So... Um, stay tuned, check out the next video, and we will finish the lab.